Okay, so I'm Jen Yuan, and by day I do web interface design at a local university, and the rest of the time I'm a Web 2.0 free agent. And I'm going to talk about how you hack cats into dogs, how you get cats to do the tricks that dogs do. So training them to sit and shake and do other things. So here's my two cats. Um, yeah, aww. <laughs> they do all the things that cats do. And uh, they're pretty regular guys. Two males, they're rescues from off the streets of Philadelphia. But in one regard, they are not like most other cats, which is they do the dog thing. They sit, and we get a little bit of bag. And when they're really, really feeling it, high five. Woohoo! So. I'm going to talk about how you get this done. Um, many of you probably have cats. You probably don't want to go around in circles trying to figure this out for yourself. So nine lives, nine tips for how it is that you actually go and train cats, hack cats into being dogs. First thing, step back from your preconceptions. We think about dogs as being the household animals that do tricks, and so cats are the opposite. That makes it really difficult. Let me suggest you're just thinking about the problem the wrong way. Okay, you have to break down the way you think about it and let go of your baggage. Second, recruit every useful skill set. I was a psychology major in college, which means that I went work with goldfish and pigeons and yeah, you bet, a lot of rats. So they were like, you know, a pound and a half a piece, these retired male breeders. They were big. Cats, piece of cake. Third, make the most of who you've got. My cats, they're wonderful, but you know, one came from a dumpster at the Riverview Theater, and the other one came from the Kimmel Center construction site when it was a hole in the ground. So you don't need any pedigree, you don't need anything fancy, just take the pets you have and go with it. Fourth, get on board as early as possible. Now, that said, I did get my cats, aww. When they were really, really young, they were both under two pounds a piece, they were, you know, both rescues. So what the food lady tells them is the way the world works is the way the world works. Next, communicate expectations clearly. You may be familiar with this Gary Larson cartoon. What we say, what they look at, pets don't speak English. They have no idea what you're talking about. And you make gestures and you talk all the time. This is really important when you want to train pets. You need to find another way to be specific about what you want from the pet. And so, you need to use simple, unambiguous gestures and hand signals that are reserved exclusively for when you're asking the pet to do a trick. I want my pet to sit, I do this. I want them to do high five, I do this. I want them to go in a circle, make a fist, do this. That's the only thing they see a fist around for. Next, give immediate positive reinforcement. <laughs> Cats are repetitively motivated, so they will work for food. Now, the important thing about giving them food and giving them rewards, you have to give it right away when they're doing what you want. And you can't always be carrying dead fish in your pocket. So you need to do what's called clicker training. Every time they do what you want, you make a distinctive, unique noise, like this, that tells them, okay, cool, you did it. And that tells them the food is on the way eventually. And then they start working for the click. Sit. Give me a high five. Sit again. Give me a shake. The click tells them they're on the way. But seven, you need to move closer in a series of doable steps. Cats aren't just gonna like put their butts on the ground for you right away. So you need to reward the cat looking at you when you call them. You need to reward the cat looking up. Hold the food back behind their heads. They start moving back. Finally, they get their butts on the ground. Then you reward the sit. What this means is eight, you have to set a realistically generous time frame. It's not going to take you forever, but it is going to take you a while. And so you have to give yourself time. You have to learn to do this in approximations and iterate. And you have to celebrate all the little victories along the way and give them, be giving them rewards all the way so they stay engaged. Nine, you have to maintain what you've developed. Once you've taught them the skill, you've got to do it over and over and over and over again so it stays strong and it stays fresh and the cats keep doing it. So, is it really worth it to jump through all these hoops? <laughs> oh yeah! We call this one the ring of fire. So, nine steps for how to hack your cat into a dog. Many of these, let me draw attention to step number two, recruit every useful skill set. These will look familiar to a lot of you in this room, and why is that? 
because this is not really a talk about hacking cats into dogs, even though that's the title. There's a common phrase that we use a lot when we talk about our lives, and that's herding cats. What these skills are really about is making projects go. Web 2.0, new media, anything you want to do, new, innovative, these are the things you use every day so you can get your cats to do it. That's pretty much it. I'm Jen Yuan, I'm a web free agent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Give me a high five.